Okay, so for this section, we are going to talk about using our chi-squared test of independence. So I have this question up here, are hair and eye color independent? So there's actually a data set within our commander that I was able to go and, uh, and work on a little bit. And actually, I'm going to pull that up and download it. I've attached this file into our, uh, into our workspace on my open math it's in the extra class material and so it's got the hair eye and sex of all of these participants uh, it's a pretty big data set it's like 500 or so and I am just going to copy all of this and I'm going to bring it into my R commander okay so go ahead load that all in and now I've got my data set. Okay, so are hair and eye color independent? So let's set up with our null hypothesis. And my null hypothesis would be that uh, hair and eye color uh, do not have a true correlation. Or we could say that this is just independent. And my alternative hypothesis is that uh, hair and eye color have a true correlation. And this would be dependent. Okay, so I'm going to set it at the alpha level of 0.0, .0 I don't know, we'll do 4. Okay, so when we do this, we need to go and make sure that can we actually do this test. So we need to check, uh, check to see if our, um, if all of our observations, oh, we, we need to check to see, sorry, if we have at least five in our expected observations. Okay, so unlike the, the goodness of fit, where we actually knew the, the probabilities for each of our, um, of our outcomes, and we had this, this, like this hypothesized distribution, whether it's uniform or kind of like a, just a general one, here we don't know what the probabilities should be. We just want to see if are they independent or are they dependent with one another. Okay, so we want to see if we've got at least five in our expected, and there's an easy way that we can do this within our commander. So here we can go, we can click on our statistics, we can go to our contingency tables and we're going to build a two-way table. All right, so our two-way table, let's put I as our row variable and we can do hair as our column. When we go click on statistics, we can just leave this as no percentages. We want the chi-squared test of independence and then we can click right here and say print the expected frequencies. Now, if you're interested in how they actually are calculating those frequencies, uh, if we look on Prezi, uh, it gives us the exact equation for how they're calculating these. <laughs> Okay, so what they're doing, let me get this into full screen real quick. Is our expected value is calculated by taking the row total multiplied by the column total and then divided by the grand total. And we do that for every single uh, space in our contingency table. And then we can sum up the like square of the differences between the observed and the expected, divided by the expected, and then sum them all together. And that's how you get your chi-squared. I'm not expecting you to do that by hand, but just so that you know where the math is coming from, that's what's going on. Okay, so let's go ahead and click OK on that. And now it's going to kick out our values. And we can see, let me pull this up a little bit from the bottom, this was our frequencies that we actually saw. So we saw 20 with black hair and blue eyes. We saw of the blonde hairs, there was 94 who also had blue eyes, etc., etc. as we're going around. And we can see that we've got our chi-squared results, but we want to check down in our expected counts. And as long as all of these are above five, that we're good to go. And so we can say, um, five or uh, opposite or sorry the expected values values are indeed greater than or equal to five so we are good to go so now we can actually take a look at our chi squared value so our chi squared which is that weird x squared this guy right there chi squared 
uh, is equal to 138.29. If we want more decimals, remember we can do the options digits equals like 12 and you can force this thing to give you more decimals. We know that the degrees of freedom here are equal to nine. You're like, okay, how do we get nine? Well, it takes the number on the rows minus one and the number of the columns minus one and then multiplies them together. So we've got four minus one is three, four minus one is three, three times three equals nine. That's how we got our degrees of freedom. And then we got a P value that is less than 0 0.0000. Okay, so we've got a really small P value. All right, so now we can write out our conclusion. So we can conclude this. So we can say that we collected sufficient evidence at the alpha level of uh, 0.04 with a p-value of 0. Point of, we can say like approximately 0. 0.0000. <laughs> that uh, to reject the claim that uh, that eye color and hair color are independent and conclude or and instead conclude that they are different are sorry not different but dependent okay and that's about all that i want us to do we're not going to be doing any real post talks one thing that we do want to do is we want to plot out the bar graphs here so we've got this black blonde brown red and we've got this blue brown green and hazel let's go ahead and do a bar graph so we can actually kind of see what's going on okay so let's go ahead and look at our models or sorry graphs and we can go down to bar graph and then we're gonna pick, let's pick our column as our variable. So we're gonna do that for the I. And then we're gonna plot by groups and we're gonna plot by hair and click okay. So we've got hair as the plot by. And then we can go to options and we wanna do this side by side parallel. Okay, and then we can click okay. And we now have a plot that looks like this. All right, now if each of these, so unfortunately the colors don't match up with the colors. I could show you how to do that, but it's more work than it's worth. But here we've got our eye color. So this is for all the blues, all the browns, all the greens, and all the hazels. Now if these, if these were independent, we would expect to see these, uh, these distributions to roughly look the same. But instead we could see that they actually are changing. So if you have blue, we are much more likely to basically have blonde or brown hair. If we have brown eyes, we're most likely to have black or brown. Green, we kind of have like a semi-even distribution and hazel you're much more likely to have brown hair and anyhow so this little thing just kind of lets us see that are there um, are there changes in the like the frequencies as we go along uh, from blue brown green and hazel eyes as to what the hair color was so we can see that these are in fact um, dependent that there's some correlation between these variables of hair color and eye color uh, and that's about it so Good luck and hope that this helps out.